Good morning, everyone. How are we all doing? Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uplers. My name is Graham Day. Hey, hey, you. Yeah, you. How you doing? How you doing? If you're in the chat, please let me know how you do. I want to know how you are doing. Let me know, right? I'm waiting. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know. Oh, okay, fine. Fine, babe. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Graham. Thank you very much for asking. Nice, nice. If you are in the chat, please let us know how you're doing. Or just say hello. Do whatever you want to do. Do you know what? You don't even have to let us know. You can lurk. That's fine. You can lurk and let us know that you're lurking, which kind of defeats the point of lurking. But but we get we, we get how it works with an exclamation mark lurk in the chat if you want to get involved. Welcome in to Ice Cream Uploads. If you don't know who we are, I did mention it. My name is Graham. This is Bibi, and we are Ice Cream Uploads. And in true ice creamy fashion. This is The Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast. Even if we do say so ourselves, we are going to give you our did. thoughts and impressions on the biggest and the best and the breaking stories in the world of video games. And we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. So if you are live in the chat, please feel free to give us said thoughts and impressions. We do go live on Twitch each and every single weekday at 10 a.m. Ish. Ish. So yeah, we go live at 10 a.m. ish each and every single weekday. Today it's eight minutes past 11. Uh, so we do work in the games industry. We go live when we can around that. It's usually around 10, 10, 11 ish, 10 ish. So yeah, if you're in the chat, please feel free to get involved. And it's important that you do get involved because we turn this live stream that goes live at 10 a.m. ish into a podcast, a video on YouTube and an audio podcast on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and Google Play, all the places where people can watch and listen on demand, but they don't get to give us said thoughts and impressions in the chat it's your job to do that on behalf of everyone else before we jump into the news though because that's what we're all here for let me just give you a couple of reminders exclamation mark giveaway if anyone wants to type exclamation mark giveaway into the chat i will love you forever because that will let you guys know how you can get stuff for free uh, and that stuff this time is a 50 pound insert coin voucher as well as that exclamation mark loot drop if one of you beautiful people could type that into the chat that will let subscribers know how they can get stuff for free too all of the freebies we like to give back to our community because that's just what we do uh, and then final exclamation mark insert coin if one of you guys just want to do that too then that will let you know how you get 20 percent off clothing purchases but that's enough about us and the bits that we're giving away and our friends at insert coin how the devil are you all doing? What did you get up to last night, babe? Good question. What did I do? What day is it? Who am it's I? Tuesday today. <laughs> um, started watching Derek again. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever seen it and ever watched it. Um, it was one of Ricky Gervais' series from maybe 2013. Fantastic. If you've not watched it, it's an absolute must. If you can get away from him, like a lot of people potentially didn't watch it because they thought he was taking a piss out of someone who has learning difficulties but it, it genuinely isn't he's just portraying that character and it's really sweet and sincere it's amazing if you've not watched it it will probably will make you cry every single episode um but yeah it's fantastic so we started watching that again we've watched all three series cal pilkinson is an absolute legend i love his stuff anyway and he's in the first ser series and he's yeah it's electric if you haven't watched it definitely watch it but we started watching that again what about you what did you do um i carried on playing some um, Miles Morales, which is a ridiculously good game. Not only, like, Spider-Man was really good, and Miles Morales, even though it's it's a short game, has learned everything from Spider-Man and just polished it a little bit. So little things like, when you're playing Spider-Man, you are, like, the Web Slinger Supreme. You are the guy that everybody knows. You you dropped in as an experienced superhero. So when you're flying through the air, you kind of glide in effortless ease. But Miles Morales, the, the point of that is you're kind of the youngling. You're just learning things. You're the Padawan learner of Jedi sort of Spider-Manville. And you can see it just in the simple things like flying around on the web. Like imagine, imagine you were holding onto a rope and swinging through the air like over 100 meters there's no way that you'd be facing perfectly forward you'd rotate around facing the wrong way and stuff like that. and just little tiny details in it that you just see because i've just played spider-man and jumped straight into miles morales afterwards i noticed things like that and then there's other things like i 
Uh, I mentioned, I think I mentioned it when I played it. Out of all the things that you could you could invest to buy skills for in the game, the one thing that I bought first was the ability to do flips and stuff in the air on on Spider-Man, rather than stuff that could be useful, gadgets and stuff that could work and to help me take out enemies. Just flipping. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, Miles Morales, they've built in loads, so you can do forward flips, back flips, spinny cork, screwy sort of stuff, like almost Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, but in Spider-Man sort of variety. Kick, kick flip, twist your way through the air. So yeah, I was playing more Miles Morales. I'm about halfway through the story now. I've done all sorts of side missions and stuff. The fast travel just works infinitely better than it did on um, Spider-Man. Not that it was broken on Spider-Man. It was fine, but it's just so much more useful. The, the fact that you basically use the underground, you can get across the city in no time. There's no loading screens because obviously I'm playing on the PS5. Exceptional mm -hmm. game. Plus... That suit that I tweeted yesterday, the Spider-Man Miles Morales 2020 suit, the one that's got like a daft punk helmet, that is badass. Uh, sadly, that yeah. doesn't exist as a purchase because I would add that to my collection behind me, but it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You can't buy the fucking book. But yeah, loving it. That's what I did last Does night. It exist? Um, not that I could see. If anyone, if anyone has seen it or doesn't does know an Etsy link, I did a quick search, but I couldn't see anything. But it was a very quick search. Yeah, um, I, I imagine someone on Etsy has made something like that because someone on someone on Etsy will they make everything. So obviously, I w it, it, surprise, it will surprise me if someone hasn't made one somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I, to to I expected to see it because I know on Etsy you can still buy the um, Cyborg Ninja from Metal Gear Solid. You can still buy Grey Fox's helmet, and that's like going back twenty odd years for Metal Gear Solid. Was yeah. it twenty? three years ish something like that um so you can still buy gray fox's helmet on etsy from that so i thought miles morales but i didn't it didn't uh, it didn't pop up it could be there somewhere but anyway if you haven't played it um no spawn whatsoever just genuinely uh love the game miles morales exceptional gameplay spider-man was good miles morales much much better much much better the story as well i mean not at the start the story on spot everything about spider-man was good but everything on miles morales is just as good and then some and and like little moments of the story early on just nice and emotive and quite creative yeah it's good it's good i, I won't go into details because people might play it but yeah there you go anyway let's jump in the chat let's see who's here west good morning um lurking as i have a three hour health and safety meeting yikes oh Someone needs Oof. to report that meeting to health and safety. Three hours of meeting on health and safety. Surely that's got to be bad for your health. Yeah. Get out of there. <laughs> Lake, good morning. Chucky, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, actually. Uh, Gagad, good morning, sir. Uh, Mr. Luke Pastille is back. Luke, the lurk, reporting for duty. How are you doing? We appreciate you. Uh, Mr. Garlic Clark is here as well. Good morning, Garlic. Um, Asim says top of the morning to you which I'm assuming isn't a reference to my United top but because Asim's a United fan I'm absolutely going to say it is mm -hmm. dug out my human race top for the first time in a while uh, nice um, do you know what love this top love the way it looks not the greatest material so it's one of those shirts where you wear it for like three hours and you can just smell yourself so I don't tend to wear it when I'm yeah. streaming but I thought do you know what fuck it I'm at, I'm at home I'm working at, uh, for the day we're only doing an hour stream this can get on and then if it needs to get off it's get off it's fine <laughs> it looks good um uh, Miles Morales is just cool, says Mr. T. Actually, let me read that. Let me do that again. We all know what's happening. Miles Morales is just cool. Uh, love, love the story. Love the gameplay. Everything. Yeah, still have voice, man. Yeah, still have voice, man. It's fine. It's fine. Um, it reminds me, I need to order my ODST helmet from Etsy. Uh, do it. Do it. I mean, Halo, is that not what... That is, oh no, that's the same game, isn't it? Oh no, that's Doom, that's Doom, it's, it's the same game. No, it's not the game. Do Doom Helmets, Bell, just saying, just saying, I'm joking. Only oh, joking, calm down, calm down. Uh, it reminds me, I'd have done that one. As an ex-boner, I dislike the Spider-Man games immensely. <laughs> you're an mm. ex-boner, so you're no longer a boner? <laughs> <laughs> you used to be a boner? Is that what you mean? <laughs> to be fair, technically we all used to be a boner, if you think about it. <laughs> but that's a little bit deep, which is what she said. Let's move into some actual gameplay conversations. Actually, news games news discussions before we do. Let's actually wrap things off. Uh, health and safety meeting is only 30 minutes. The rest is for the risk assessment. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Halo. No, I was joking, Jordan. I was meaning I've got a, a Doom helmet behind me that I was pointing at and saying that was the Halo helmet, you know, because I was saying Master Chief... Uh, a Doom Slayer, 
same helmet. I was kind of mocking both games at once without really doing anything, but but it's fine. You didn't get it, so it's okay. It's okay. Let's move on. Uh, we're not talking about Xbox, though, or Xboners. What we are talking about, something that actually is kind of close to Jordan, really, is esports betting. Uh, does, any, does anyone bet? Anyone at all? Sports? Any form of betting? Has anyone betted on esports? Would anyone be interested in betting on esports? Well, that, as you will have seen if you follow us on social media, is the story that we are leading with today, as it's kind of becoming a little bit more apparent for gamers. As Sony has patented its own game betting system. Uh, this is written by Andy Robinson at VGC, and it says esports platform could allow spectators to bet money or in-game items with odds determined by player history. Uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment has patented its own esports betting platform. The patent was filed in 2019, but published this month and describes a system that allows users to bet currency, including Bitcoin, or digital items with odds determined by machine learning. The patent could, in theory, be used to allow live match betting on esports games, such as those held during the EVO fighting game tournament, which the PlayStation parent jointly acquired earlier this year. According to the patent, Sony's system would use the past histories of players or esports teams to determine betting odds offered to spectators viewing gameplay this data could be to de start again this data could be determined there we go from either the current video game being played i.e street fighter 5 or a player's entire fighting game history including win-loss ratios and more um, the patent describes... I'm going to skip past the image because that's a lot of stuff to jump through and will be difficult for people that are listening rather than watching On Demand uh, to uh, go through. It is in the article, so if you do want to see the image, then feel free to go through it. Um, the patent describes the ability for, uh, for the system to access certain game data to support betting. Quote, for example, video may be searched to identify where in the video a virtual grenade has the possibility of killing one, two, or three characters, the patent reads, thus providing odds for such a scenario. Other specialty bets could include the chance of a certain player being defeated within the next X minutes, as well as straightforward bets such as the total and individual point scores. The patent also describes a system for betting against friends or other spectators. Users could send others bet proposals selected from a predetermined list, such as the next character to get hit. The patent suggests that spectators could even choose to set their own odds or go with those set by the system. As with Sony's many other patents, the information published this month does not necessarily indicate that such a system will ever be implemented, only that the company has developed the idea. Earlier this year, a survey from Consumer Insights Group Interpret found that 52% of esports followers are likely to place bets on major esports tournaments. And as the popularity of esports gambling increases, so have measures from game companies looking to ensure their matches aren't fixed. Activision Blizzard entered a multi-year partnership with SportRadar last year purely to monitor gambling on its Overwatch League and Call of Duty League. Sony Interactive Entertainment announced its intention to team up with a new sports venture, RTS, to jointly acquire the Evolution Champion Series in EVO of March last year. Do you know, we don't need to know about that. What we do need to know, though, is that Sony has patented its own game betting system. Bib, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the, the way that they've, they've, they've worded it in this... I think the other site that is trying to rival, is it called FanDuel? I was watching the doc stream Resident Evil 8 last week, and Ian, on the Thursday, he was playing it on the Wednesday, and on the Thursday he said that he was doing a Warzone FanDuel, and I think he said it was like a, a website where people can bet that in one particular match he was going to kill people with three grenades and then take someone out with a sniper rifle from over 50 meters away, and they can do like an accumulator on that kind of stuff. I think this is what this is leading to, and I think that FanDuel is potentially the uh, the, the rival company, that, well, the, the company that they're trying to rival. How this is going to work is very different, though. Is it, it? I didn't read anything in here that told me how it was going to work. Like, is it going to be something that comes up on your PlayStation dashboard? Is it an app that you have to use on your phone? Um, because I think it would be quite cool if they had the app on the PlayStation. I mean, it would obviously, obviously have to be an 18s and over um, mechanic. Uh, so if you have if you have a child account, the prompts won't come up. But if you had it installed on your on your console and you was watching it on 
um twitch the, the 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 event that's going on or on youtube a prompt would come up very much like the overlays that they used to do on twitch i don't even know if they still do that but if you're watching uh, a particular event they'd have drops but they'd also have like a a poll that comes up and you can vote and stuff like that and i are, think they used it for PUBG. yeah those are um developer specific so PUBG's stuff there and um, they had to obviously put that stuff together and that is kind of built in mm. conjunction with Twitch, but yeah, 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 that kind of stuff. Yes. So that kind of thing would be suit that I think it would be super cool, especially if you have like, there'll be, there'll be, and I use this in the loosest term, there'll be fucking nerds out there that have no interest in football, but interested in Call of Duty to the absolute end. They, they know everything that there is to know. They follow esports and they want to bet on it but they won't bet on the football. So this is an opportunity for them to be able to do that. I don't bet on anything anymore. Um, I did bet and I just cancelled all my accounts. I mean, I didn't have a gambling problem. I just got an addictive personality and I think it would have probably gone south if that was the case. Um, but yeah, this this kind of thing, like I would have loved to have been able to bet on the PES League finals where we was there and obviously we was hosting it. So it was a complete no-no. But it's like, you know, when you walk into the room and you see someone's on fire in the training days and you're thinking they're going to win it and I could probably make a little bit of money off that. Obviously, we're not going to do that because that would be highly illegal. But ha having that inside knowledge of particular things, if you are a massive fan of these events, I think it, it's fun. It's fun. I mean, gambling is fun if you do it in... If you've got the enough disposable income, I mean, I'm preaching to the converted. Everyone, everyone knows this in the chat anyway. But if you've got the disposable income and you fancy a gamble, that's absolutely fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And this is just another way for you to get invested into a particular product. Yeah, I, I like this. I, I kind of like it. I mean, I always, I always have a bit of caution when I'm speaking about gambling. Similar sort of thing as Bib. I, I just I'm well. I'm a northern man. I'm tight as fuck. So I just uh, don't don't gamble because that's spending me money. Uh, yeah. But I I'm I'm just not gambling. Doesn't scratch my itch. But I know a lot of people that it does. And then I kind of like if I'm saying at a football match, uh, and it's like, um, oh shit, we just need one more, and that's it. Walking home with two hundred quid, you can then buzz off someone mm. else's buzz, kind of thing. Like yeah, yeah. So if if imagine you were sat at the, I don't know, the COD uh, League Finals or you're, you're the League of Legend Majors or something like that, and you're sat there in the crowd and you just like the betting play sort of stuff that you see on the Paddy Power adverts and things like that, yeah. but, but knowing that if... Uh, not that the doc plays competitive, but if the doc can just do uh, turn this two v one situation around, boom! Just yeah, mm -hmm. I, I love the idea of that and that that working with people. Naturally, there is the, some some sort of like wariness in terms of you know gambling responsibly and all of that stuff. It goes without Absolutely. saying, but yeah. <laughs> It's it's interesting to see Sony actually getting involved because I was I mean I've had a few conversations with this on on uh, over the last couple of months ish maybe a few months with Jordan loosely not mess, very in depth just because Jordan works in in esports betting um, and I was like always kind of like would that be something that Sony gets involved with because Sony is the first party Sony is the platform the one that builds content for children but also builds content for 18 plus because you know children don't get to see the themes that are in The Last of Us for example so I was thinking okay they definitely do make content specifically for mature gamers and esports betting is for mature gamers but gambling is kind of one of those taboo subjects. Like you've got gambling, alcohol, uh, sex, drugs, those kind of things all brands keep away from, even though they all have varying levels of being legal. Most of them uh, are entirely, uh, all of them are entirely legal in certain places and so on. Um, so, yeah, I was always kind of like, is it just going to be the William Hills and the Paddy Powers and the sports bets and the whoever uh, the esports brands are, like Fan Jewels and so on, is it just going to be those guys? Or will the likes of um, the Xbox and the Sonys of the world actually step into it? So seeing that Sony have filed patents for it back in 2019, nothing has happened in that two years uh, since then, or nothing that we've seen has happened in that two years since then. But yeah, they I say that they have purchased Evo, so they've bought a fighting tournament, which is probably one of the most sh surefire, uh, surefire betting areas out there. I mean, you've you've got things like football games, which have changed dramatically year on year. You've got things like the COD leagues and so on, which change reasonably year on year. Then you've got things like the the 
League of Legends and stuff, which you've got people like Bjergsen or whoever that's been around for a million years kind of thing. So they change less so. But the, the FGC, you tend to have people that are good at FGCs remain at a high level. So that, I mean, I could be wrong. If anyone has uh, has any contrasting opinions on that, feel free to let me know. I'm not m- mega involved in sports betting, but my assumption would be that if there's one area where you want to dabble with sports betting and esports betting, it would be the FGC, the fighting game community. So the fact that PlayStation have bought Evo, the premier fighting game community event, whilst also looking at uh, its own uh, patenting its own betting system then maybe they are going to move into it maybe it's something that could work and like like baby says maybe it's minority report level overlays where you're just watching the game and it's like a um uh, odds on baby a two to one would you like to know more like like freaking what starship troopers-esque mm-hmm. a little pop-up comes up and you go blink place bet boom okay the interesting thing though is that the fact that you can you can bet money you can bet Bitcoin and things like that, but in-game items. I mean, how does that work? What am I mm. betting? Like three months of PS Plus? Am I betting my my uh, <laughs> my PUBG level three helmet skin that I got from PCS two kind of thing? Is is it that? What am I betting? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how does that I, work? I imagine it's like the, the the weapons that you've been able to grind your diamond camo M sixteen or something like that. You'd be able to bet for I don't know the next version up from that is that that would be a ridiculous bet i'm probably i'd probably rather lose a fiver than something that i've grinded 90 hours for but yeah i mean it's it's all relative if this some if this is something that you are interested in already and you can bat, uh, and you can bet in your bp points uh, that's the in-game currency on pubg yeah no, no, that's just a number that ticks up pointlessly in the top corner of the screen to the point where, <laughs> where you've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of it that you never get to use. That's what it is. Or maybe that bit then becomes the currency that you can use <laughs> and this kind of thing. And not that be whatever you win, you may not be able to use it against anything. But I mean, yeah, it's a, it, 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 I think it's cool for the people who are invested into the betting community um, and are super nerdy enough to be able to know everything about the teams that are playing uh, and not like you're betting on like the Iranian fourth division women's team like normal people seem to be doing on football nowadays because there's nothing else for them to be able to bet on. Yeah, it's just another alternative uh, for people who are in the know to be able to try and get something out of it. And I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing um, because betting is legal. It's not, it's not illegal yeah, yeah, to be able sure. to bet as long as it's, it's just something that responsibly regulated. Jobs are good and exactly. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder, do we see if Sony does it? Does Xbox start doing it? And if Xbox starts doing it, do we suddenly see the ability to start spending your Twitch channel points on on bets and stuff like that, and then redeeming channel points and turning them into real world currency i mean it's, it's one step could lead to the other and 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 so on uh so it'd be interesting to see how it goes or not as the case may be two years mm-hmm. ago this file uh this patent was filed and nothing has seemingly happened like i say evo could be a big step for that but we'll we'll, we'll see jumping in the comments Cal- callum says i work in betting uh, callum no you don't the fact that you spend yeah. like 20 to 30 quid a day on uh the races at Entry is not the same thing, mate. Are the races at entry even still going? Does horse racing still exist these days? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, John says, considering I lead one of the world's biggest uh, esports betting products, Lel. Um, no, you don't. Liar. He does. He does. Uh, this is an odd. Does he work at midnight? This one. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. T says, this is an odd one. Uh, nice. I bet it'll be a roaring success. Hey, that was crap. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to bed. Uh, I'm going to bed against this actually happening. It means bet. Okay, there we go. Uh, the odds are low. Hey. <laughs> uh, Callum's company actually owns FanDuel. Uh, they're really pushing into the esports market. Interesting. Did not actually know that. There you go. There you go. I didn't even know you worked in betting, to be fair. Uh, that's a t- turn up for the books. Hey. Uh, anyway, uh, as long as they won't find a way to go to EA Sports, I am okay with this. <laughs> other betting e- uh, esports providers, Midnight, FanDuel, etc., just take content from other people. We create our products that we provide. And and it's, it's actually a pretty cool concept. I won't, I won't go into any detail because I don't want to out you or anything. Uh, he, he works on Pornhub.com. That's pretty big. Makes his own content. That's what he's doing. But, mm. but, but, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm generally risk averse, so avoid gambling. Plus, I have an addictive personality. But I see esports as having far too many variables to have betting, technology issues, etc. I mean, there is all sorts of, like, there are um, companies out there that provide content just for those purposes i mean like let's let's rewind a little bit has anyone ever watched bongo's bingo 
you will have seen Absolutely. something. Um, this is a bongos bingo for those that don't know is basically a, it at its roots is a club night. Um, you essentially go play bingo, get drunk, jobs are good in a real world pub. But through lockdown, they've had their bingo on stream and they've had a bunch of different stuff uh, tied into it. And one of the things, uh, one of the segments in it features like these digital, um, fully RNG generated horse races that are backed by um, odds and weighting and stuff. And it will be a digital horse race where there's eight horses on the track uh, and bizarre shit happens. So it will still be weighted by odds. You're not just throwing your money away kind of thing. But like one horse will just suddenly get up and fucking get bagpipes out and start doing like a highly <laughs> jig down the track or something like that. Or a rocket from space will just hit another horse and blow it completely up kind of thing. And and you just you're betting on on a computer game. Uh, effectively in that sort of sense but because it's regulated and it's weighted it's, it's, it's perfectly fine it's 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 uh, legal and that's kind of the thing where if people will bet on that people have fun just betting and playing the system and that's not a bad thing obviously it's a bad thing when it goes too far for people but so people will happily bet on this some people will be like okay i understand sports i understand uh the, the different like there's you've got form you've got how many uh horses are in a race the other types of ho- uh, horses that are in the race you've got how the going is and, and the ground okay that the ground's a bit shit this horse really does really well in in shit ground this this horse needs to be on a smooth field but then it flies like a, a, a all that stuff people get fully into that whereas um some people will be like okay well you, i can't see all that i don't have that information with these sports i don't understand the technology i'm not interested but other people will be like i don't give a shit if it's horse i don't give a shit if it's a digital horse i don't give a shit if it's bibby playing resident evil and i, I have to bet in terms of number of minutes it's going to be before the next ah! and a scream happens as a monster yeah. jumps out or whatever i'm gonna bet on that shit because that's just what i enjoy um, so is there a place for it? Absolutely. Uh, I, I believe so. I mean, I am risk averse. I won't use it either, but people absolutely will. It's just a case mm-hmm. of whether that transitions to that console experience in that sort of way yeah. or not. I'm not. That's the bit that would wait to be seen. Do people want to gamble whilst sat at their console or do they want to gamble while doing something? That said, some people gamble while they're sat at the football, so maybe they do. Yeah. I think one of them things, though, as well, if you if you like... Betting on football results nowadays isn't the norm. I don't, unless you've got like a massive accumulator, like a lot of people do the request of bets where they'll end up saying, right, okay, I want four corners. I want uh, two challenges by Fernandinho on a yellow card. And then, I don't know, fucking they're going to get four throw-ins. Like they're the ones, the build your bet ones are the ones that seem to get the most money now rather than just betting on results and scores. So potentially if you're watching the E-Premier League that FIFA are doing, you might have, I don't know, text to go two up and then have two throw-ins in the second half or something along them lines. Like, I'm not massively into the Premier League and stuff like that. I'm just using the football concept. I, being able to bet on stuff like that is, I imagine people would be more happy at betting on how many corners you're going to get and how many throw-ins that you potentially have. Like, betting on a betting on a football result in a football game, unless it's an outright winner, I don't, it's very difficult because, like, it, like, like Tito says, there's so many different features, functions, and things that you can't guarantee. I mean, you can't guarantee anything in betting and for sport anyway. But yeah, it's a, you're 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 more inclined to get an eleven ten score line in a football game virtually than you are on a real life football pitch. So yeah, like two goals in the second half might be a little bit better than just saying, okay, City are going to win this E Premier League two nil in this particular game. I think it's just different variables. That's the word I'm looking for. Too many variables in a sports game for them to be able to just bet outright on a winner. I think the winning stuff, the winning formula would be to include other things like winning the game by two grenades or getting two headshots and things like that. I'd like to see how it how it runs. Because in a world where we're having conversations about should loot boxes be on consoles, on console games, um, if we're already having these conversations, loot box is too much like betting. And we don't want better near the children. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. What somebody think of the children? What What about if we actually yeah. put actual betting in front of the children? So whatever it is, maybe maybe Sony were plowing ahead with it until 2019, and then suddenly Belgium went, "Whoa, wait a minute! Actually, loot boxes. Do you realise this looks a bit like betting?" And then Sony's gone, 
that screech to a stop. Okay, yeah. we'll just we'll just see what happens first. So it, it will be interesting to see how it goes. Anyway, let's let's start to move forward because we've spent a good chunk of time on this. I didn't think we would have this much, but then again, we've got two people from the uh, video games betting industry in, in the chat. So what, what what can we expect? Paul Marico says, "Morning, chaps and chats. Good morning." He also says, "Oh Jesus, what is that shirt, Graham?" Mind your own business. Uh, yeah. uh, dependent, the average punter won't bet on esports. It's very niche with these pros, uh, products. Uh, kids have been gambling with FIFA for years. Hey. <laughs> um, esports betting companies that use other people's content don't have much clue what makes a good betting product, unfortunately. Oh, this is fighting talk. Do, uh, John, oh, John and Callum are going to have a fight. I thought they were going to have a box, a betting off in the chat, but it's not. Um, link, please, by the way. I will send it to my friend, which Bibbs has already shared. Nice. Um, Colin Echo says, hello, how are you? Hey, good morning. How are you? How are you? That's what matters. Hopefully you're well. Uh, to be fair, everyone is doing it in different ways to try and break out into it. Um, I don't think Sony will go through with it. Gambling never mixes well with developers or big studios in any capacity. Look at the whole uh, one expert and the backlash and the sponsorship for some teams, especially with football now trying to remove betting sponsors from shirts. Um, uh, yeah. But then again, it, it depends. I mean, it depends on how how it matures and how it works around it. It's the same thing with like, I mean, a million years ago, you'd have every Formula One car was plastered in tobacco products and that's kind of all gone because, you know, health uh, and the like. It's just a matter of whether betting can change in terms of, yeah, it, it can be destructive, but it can also be non-destructive and it just depends on how that how betting matures in a modern world to the point where people realize that betting and gambling can be an addiction. So if that if that all changes around that and then the narrative mm -hmm. is changed and it's done in a, a very protective sort of way, then I, I could see it could potentially be something that Sony want to lean into. I mean, it's huge, huge money and we know that Sony likes to make money. So yeah, potentially. Um, is, that not, is that not what they said? Like, are, you, are football teams allowed to have beer on the front of the shirts now? Uh, I can't remember. I don't it, it, think back so because it used to be Carlsberg, yeah, Carling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the um the Rangers Celtic both had Carling kind of thing. Uh, Carlsberg, yeah. Carling, Carling. Yeah, Liverpool had Carlsberg and so on. But yeah, I don't think they're allowed alcohol anymore. Um, but they're allowed betting, uh, which is weird because they're both legal as long as you're <laughs> eighteen plus. And both. How long is it before they're going to have OnlyFans on the front of it? <laughs> Well, you know, Team Viewer. There's, there's, a, there's a local local only fans. You can only watch me on Team Viewer, which is what United sponsorship is <laughs> going to be for next season. So there you go. Uh, uh, I'm a just I, I'm just here in because doing some chemics and physics. Are you, are you you're you're doing chemics and uh, oh my god chemics and physics? Nice. Enjoy your chemics and physics. Uh, yeah, it's been a long old time since I did chemics and uh, chemics. Yeah, we go chemics and physics. I forgot. I forgot words. Then I had to look at the word chemics to make sure I'd said it right because I tricked myself <laughs> out. Anyway, um, by the way, all personal opinion. What I said. To be fair, how do you regulate it? bookmakers of strip regulations and betting? And that's that's the that's the kind of thing. Is is how do you have the cutoffs and stuff? We've already seen people um, say my child spent a million pounds on my Fortnite account uh, and I need the money back. Um, What's not to say that a child had got access to someone else's console and spent the money and stuff? And then who becomes at risk then? Do, like, that is a child that's actively bettered using a betting platform. Is the betting platform at risk? Is Sony at risk? Or is the parent the one that takes the responsibility? And that's that's quite difficult then to box off in the terms and conditions to a point where a court of law will go, yeah, if you have this betting app on your PlayStation because then it will need to be something that's not just easily activated. If it's just a pop-up that you can access, you press your share button or whatever, your options button and click betting and pops up on screen as an overlay. Is that too easy opt-in? Do you need to download and install or enable that option in the system menus to enable that to be, I mean, yeah, there's all sorts of levels to that. It becomes hugely difficult to regulate and that is probably why the patent was filed in 2019 and in mid-2021 we still don't have anything that shows it because it's it's a great idea from a business perspective and probably from a content perspective if it suits your needs, um, but it's also a difficult idea for sure. Um, I started with a free £10 bet, put it on a single banker's, in my opinion, Man City to beat Fulham, for example, and purchased my Steel, uh, Steel Series 9s with the winnings. Gambling is good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, I think betting for kids is bad because uh, it's bad. And 
and doing very good. Oh, you're doing very good. Uh, I think. <laughs> but yeah, betting for kids is bad because we've. I mean, as we mentioned previously, it's it's the maturity of knowing when when to stop. Uh, what is good and what is just addictive kind of thing. So yeah, it's it's, it's having the maturity of it. So yeah, for sure. Um, no alcohol ads are banned on shirts. Um, yeah, uh, is that a no alcohol ads are banned? I know there's a full stop there. I'm just making sure that's no alcohol ads are banned on shirts. If that's what it is, then that's what I thought it was. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, remember, uh, was it Team Upon? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move ahead as uh, we have a lot to talk about, including does anyone want to save money on a Twitch subscription? Does anyone want to save a couple of quid? Yeah, yeah, I think we all do. I think we all do. Why not? It, it would be nice. It would be nice. But um, that's not really the foundation of this conversation. For those that may have seen it yesterday, Twitch announced uh, a new program that will adjust to subscription pricing based on the viewer's location, which... Um, I haven't read through this article, and I will see if this article changes my opinion. I will give you my opinion off the bat. Uh, the headline that I saw was that um, Mexico and Turkey are having their subscription prices dropped um, because if you take the cost of a subscription in the UK uh, or, or US, where there's a high cost of living, um, but you also have a high wage, and then drop that into a, a less economically developed country that has lower wages and, and lower cost of uh, living, but still charge the same price. Suddenly that that $5 subscription becomes the equivalent of a $10 or a $12 subscription in those local territories. So dropping the price to make it the same is equality. That's keeping it equal across the board. So that's what I thought a good thing, good thing. Although there was a lot of conversations around whether this was good or not yesterday. Anything you want to add before I jump in, Bib, or shall I, should we just jump in? What we're saying? No, no, just plow through, plow through. Okay, this is written by Christina Alexander at The Gamer, and it says, Twitch to adjust subscription prices based on viewer location. The first two countries that are going to see the change in subscription prices are Mexico and Turkey. Twitch viewers around the world are going to start getting more bang for their buck when they subscribe to their favourite streamers. Starting on May the 20th, Twitch will begin to adjust subscription prices based on the country viewers live in so that they're more in line with the local cost of living. According to the streaming services blog post published on Monday, Twitch's new subscription pricing programme stems from the fact that there's a severely low percentage of viewers supporting content, uh, content creators with paid subscriptions outside of North America. To put this into perspective, Europe's rate of active Twitch users is 50% lower, while Latin America's is 80% lower. Uh, this discrepancy is attributed to the difference between the US dollar, the tier one subscription costs 499 US dollars, and other foreign uh, currencies that make it difficult for viewers to watch and support their favorite content creators, as well as access custom emotes and enjoy other subscriber privileges without breaking the bank. The first two countries that are going to see the change in subs subscription prices are Mexico and Turkey, since they have a number of streamers and viewers who have been passionate about the price change for some time. The cost of a tier one subscription for Mexico will be 48 pesos, which is 2.4, uh, two and a half US dollars, while Turkey will pay 9.90 in Turkish lira, which is about 119 US dollars. Uh, the pros of lower subscription prices for international viewers are not without its cons for streamers. The lower subscription costs in affected countries where they have large subscription bases will mean they lose some income as a result of the pricing adjustment. To smooth out the transition to the new pricing model, Twitch will offer streamers three months of revenue adjustment incentive payments to make up for potential revenue loss, provided that they stream at least 85% of their live baseline hours and meet certain eligibility criteria. Uh, that... Uh, the chart that lays out the eligibility streamers need to meet for those payments can be found here, linked to the article. Um, in essence, lower subscription prices for international Twitch users means greater growth in creators' communities and a substantial increase in revenue, whether they're just starting out or are already well-established. Mexico and Turkey will be joined by most countries in Europe, Latin America, the Middle East, Africa and Asia, beginning the third quarter of 2021. For a list of countries that will be affected by the subscription price adjustment, click here also linked in the article so twitch will be adjusting subscription prices based on your viewer location if you're in a less economically developed country then expect a less economically developed price fair or not what are your thoughts bib yeah i mean across the board if the cost of living is more expensive and you earn more then surely you should pay the standard like if you don't and you aren't 
then you should pay the lower. I mean, that's again, like you said, it's equality, it's inclusion, it's letting everybody have the same experience. It's that that for me is only fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a right move. I'm, I'd like to see how this goes. And it's interesting that I, have they even done a trial period with this, and they're just going straight out the gate with the fully fledged version. They must have done enough research to be able to put this out in the first place. So. Yeah, I mean, let's see how this let's see how this goes. If there's people that wanted to support to support their favorite content creators, and it was costing them nearly double of what we would usually pay, considering that we're a more advanced. Don't want to say that, but we are in a better position economically. Um, then that makes absolute sense. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. It, how does this how does this line the the streamers' pockets? So they, I assume they will get paid less. It's uh, not just going to be a straight up five pound. Yeah, exactly. So that's this is where the, the trade-off is. Um, <clears throat> so let's say you pay five quid to subscribe to someone's channel. Twitch instantly takes 50% of that or more. Um, can take less as well if you are like those exclusive top tier streamers that only stream on Twitch. The, the, the benefits that you get for selling those deals are you'll get 70% of the revenue and Twitch will only take 30 or something like that. That does fluctuate with tier one, two, and three. So if you do a tier three sub, a channel I think gets 70% of the, the revenue, whereas a tier one, they only get 50%, that kind of thing. So that's how it is at the moment. So you spend five quid, the channel gets two pound 50, roughly. Uh, that doesn't account for yeah. taxes and stuff. So... The difference would be that if it costs two quid to subscribe, a channel will only get one quid. For every subscription, a channel will lose £1.50 uh, for that subscription. The trade-off being that five quid to subscribe in a country where it's there's not a lot of money going around and that five quid suddenly is worth 10 quid to subscribe to a channel, on uh, obviously counting for um, exchange rates and so on. If you drop the price to a normal price, the hope is that that offset is then picked up by other people that can then subscribe. You're up, you're lowering the threshold, the floodgates, the barriers for entry to make more people be able to get involved to support their content creators. Um, so the money that you do drop off from having that one person subscription, if two more people subscribe, then you're kind of in the in the pink again. You're in the profit kind of thing. Is so that's kind of the hope for is that by making it equal, by making it more inclusive, will mean that more people can come back in, and and you kind of you grow your audience base, which is kind of kind of the ideal from a business perspective. Um, is you don't want um, I can't remember the there's a geographical phrase. Uh, a geography phrase, which basically means like, uh, don't put your eggs in one basket. So rather than having the risk being, okay, I've got one person or a few people that spend good chunks of money, if you can spread that out and have a lot of people that spend less, that means you as a content creator financially are less at risk because if some of those people go, oh, I can't be asked, I'm not, not into Twitch anymore, or I don't like this creator anymore, or I don't like the game that the person plays anymore, and they leave, they aren't taking a chunk of revenue. That's loads of little bits that can drop off that you can then hopefully replace with other people. So in that sense, overall, I'm still I'm still very pro this in terms of mm -hmm. it allows more people to get into Twitch content creation. It allows content creators, if they can get more people in, to spread the risk. If Because obviously, I said risk, but being that a lot of content creators are funded purely on their Twitch and subscription fees. Um, and if they can spread that risk across people, then uh, across more people, then that means that they've got more, more things that they can bank on. It's not they're not as at risk if some of it drops off. So I, I, I like the idea. I do understand that if uh, let's let's use Castro. I know this is not the greatest example because he is very very well taken care of financially and, and earned it. Um, but but he is Mexican. So let's say he has a large viewer base in Mexico. Going off of the stats in this, I would assume that is not the case because 80% less people uh, watch Twitch in Mexico, in Mexico or subscribe in Mexico. But let's say he's Mexican, so naturally has a large Mexican audience. By dropping that revenue, if he already has a level of saturation in Mexico, there is no way that he could fork that revenue back um so if he has most people that watch uh, twitch in mexico already subscribed to his channel he earns 20 grand a month it's probably not going to be that but let's say he does 20 grand a month they drop it round uh, dr dropped it by 50 percent. he only comes in with 10 grand a month that's a massive drop in revenue uh, revenue similarly mythrain uh, a streamer from turkey um 
I believe streams in Turkish, so therefore his audience is limited to Turkey. Castro uh, spend, uh, speaks in English, so his he will naturally have his Mexican audience, but he can diversify across North America, across Canada, across the UK, across all of Europe that speaks English. Whereas Mithrain speaks Turkish, he... There's not very many countries around the world that will will speak Turkish. I I speak like five words of Turkish, so yeah, it, I can't really. I can't, beyond Mehaba, I can't really get involved in Mithrain's uh, streams. So does that is that fair for Mithrain? Yes, they have an onboarding system for three months where he can what what do they call it? A revenue adjustment incentive. So for three months, as long as he hits his stream hours, they will give him at, uh, uh, like an incentive that will keep his wage up at that level. Great, yeah, nice. What happens after three months? Mm. Ooh, plummets, he's lost half his revenue once again. Once again, Mithrain uh, is a huge streamer, so I imagine he would be fine. So it's not necessarily those at the top that get affected, and it's not necessarily people like me and Bib, um, Ice Cream Uploads. We, I mean, let me let me tell you, we never hide how many subs we have. We don't make a point of shouting how many subs we have because we don't want to um, make it about revenues and stuff so we have 46 subscribers on the channel not a massive number but not a tiny number a number we are very proud of so for us that's not anything that we can live on so we don't we don't really look at the money we still work outside the games industry which is why we have an ish emote because we work in the games industry we don't live off the the revenues from the stream the money the stream revenue goes back into the stream so people like us don't really get affected. People at the top end will probably get affected, but we'll be okay. It's the middle ground that are specifically located in those regions that might suffer with it. But even still, I kind of feel that that will be a very small number. I kind of feel back to the old Star Wars Spock. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And I think more people getting into Twitch increasing the potential of getting European uh, audiences, specifically from our perspective, into Twitch um, and lowering the price at the expense of a few creators that will have a drop-off. I do feel that, that overall it's, it's a good thing. Thoughts, babe? I absolutely agree. Nice. I agree. Nice, nice. Uh, sweet. Okay, let's move ahead. Move ahead. Um, okay. Uh, I didn't even put the discussing now on screen then. I'd my bad. We were talking about Twitch adjusting its subscription packages, but but you get that because we mentioned it about a thousand times going through. But this one, you will have a few more thoughts on, baby. I I will have absolutely no thoughts on this. You, my friend, though, will have quite a few. As PGA uh, EA Sports PGA Tour press release reveals spring 2022 release date and PGA Championship details. Off the bat, thoughts? Yes. No. Nice. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Well, this is written by Megan DeClean. Um, nice. She should absolutely, she's in the wrong industry. Games journalism isn't the one. She should absolutely own her own, like, corporate cleaning business. Megan DeClean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Megan DeClean. <laughs> what a name. Anyway, enough of that. This is Megan DeClean at the game. I apologize, Megan. Uh, my name's called Graham Day, so I, 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 I've... I've been mocked for my name all my life. It's fine. I'll just pass it on to others. Anyway, EA Sports PJ2 has finally gotten a release date. An EA Sports press release announced the, uh, that the new game will be released in spring 2022, along with giving details regarding the game's PGA Championship. This news comes as the 2021 PGA Championship tees off this week at the Ocean Course at Kiowa Island Golf Resort in South Carolina. I don't know if it's pronounced that right, but I'm going with it. EA Sports <laughs> PGA Tour was first announced back in March uh, with the game being promoted as a next-gen title and it was a surprise for golf fans as the company has not made an attempt at a golf game since its 2015 Rory McIlroy uh, PGA Tour bombed, uh, which Bibby actually has mentioned quite a few times. He, he was a big fan. Uh, perhaps in an effort to build uh, off the, the initial excitement, EA has been slow to reveal details about the game. In April, fans learned of EA's partnership with Augusta National Golf Club to bring the Masters Tournament to EA Sports PGA Tour, along with the other three major championships, PGA Championship, US Open Championship, and the Open Championship. Additional information regarding available platforms and which pro golfers are starring in the game, however, has not yet been released. 
Now, EA has released details regarding its partnership with the PGA of America in order to bring the most authentic experience possible to fans. Players will have the chance to compete on genuine virtual renderings of the 2021 and 2022 PGA Championship host courses, as well as play as or against past PGA champions. As part of the partnership with the PGA of America, the game's leaderboard will feature members of the Team of 20 PGA golf professionals that qualify for the PGA Championship every year, in addition to tutorials and coaching challenges designed in collaboration with the PGA Education and Player Development Departments. To close out the press release, EA promised to reveal further details about EA Sports PGA Tour as the remaining major championships are played this summer. Although there is still much to be revealed about the new game, the details revealed thus far give the impression that EA is paying close attention to, to detail and is committed to delivering fans an extremely authentic experience. So PGA Tour press release gives a bunch of details including a mm -hmm. spring 2022 release date it's been a few years and the, uh, since mm -hmm. their last release which was a bit mediocre and they have some extremely yeah. strong competition uh from the lovely people at 2k shout out to uh, mr t and the crew um thoughts babe yeah uh but but saying that the last game was mediocre that's it was shit. <laughs> like, there's no other way around it. There was no other way around it. It was an abysmal game. Just, just say, you, what, recently... say what you really feel, Bib. <laughs> <laughs> I even re-downloaded it on my Xbox One downstairs to go, it, was it as bad as I remember? Was this game that shit? Yeah, it, it actually is. Um, the ball doesn't bounce onto the green. It doesn't run. It just, as soon as it hits, it's like, fucking ball like a cement ball just hitting the green it's like there's nothing to it it's genuinely one of the easiest golf games you could possibly ever play and it there's just so much content that was missing from it which is where the golf club came in and just completely picked up everything that we had loved from the past pga games that were tiger woods was heavily featured on and just made it a simulation PGA have got a long way to go, I think, to try and bridge that gap. However, EA Sports are a well-renowned game. Not, not, that doesn't mean to say that 2K aren't, but when it comes to EA Sports PGA games, you immediately go back to the wonder days of what the Tiger Woods series was about. And they were fantastic games. Tiger Woods Masters 2012 was a fantastic game, and you can just pick any of the ones that came before it, whether or not it was on the OG Xbox, the PlayStation 2, right up until what we got on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The, these games were fantastic and they have got a lot of work to do to try and have someone like me who's had an experience from the golf club one right up until the PGA Tour 2K21. Those games are phenomenal. There isn't much to criticize with those games because they have focused so much on the simulation part of a golf game to try and give you the best experience you could possibly have. There is a reason the golf club is at uh, any of the... Um, VR experiences, and when I say VR, I mean the kind of VR games where you're using your real golf clubs, hitting it into a giant white sheet where the projector is playing the golf club. Like that, you can't get more immersive than that, apart from actually taking your clubs out of the swing room and taking them onto the course. There's a reason why these games are getting used. This, they've got a long way to go in my eyes to try and bring us back because they, they fell so far off. They made it an arcade experience. It was very close to the kind of... I don't know if you ever played it. When you went into the arcade, talking like late night is, early night is, and you had a ball, and you had to flick the ball to be able to hit the ball. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was like that. It was so easy. It was so dulled down. It was so stripped back. Yeah. I mean, EA have got licenses to be able to do whatever they want. I'm still interested to see who's going to be on the front cover of this game because at the moment we've only seen uh a picture of augusta on the front of it yeah we've got a long way to go i mean they've got they've took the masters that doesn't mean to say it's not in 2k uh that is just just type in firehorn national and you'll be able to find it um but yeah they've got a long way to go in my eyes i will still be picking up this game i will still be playing it i will be surprised if it meets a lot of the standards that i've got because this is the first game that we're going to see from them for maybe seven years the 2015 the last one um so they've got a lot of work to do but it's EA, so this game will sell. This game will sell. It probably will sell more than the, the than PGA Tour uh, that 2K are going to bring out, which is unfortunate because the, the 2K are so far ahead of what makes a good golf game than EA. But it's EA Sports. You can't. They're a juggernaut. I mean, it's 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 great news for uh, for people that are interested in golf. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. So it's not for me. But 
it's the competition sort of element. The thing that's the worst, genuinely, this is an absolute crap uh, shit, shit post comment, but the thing that's the worst bit for me is the fact that it's got PGA Tour in the title because that confuses the fuck out of me. <laughs> We've got PGA yeah. Tour 2K21 and EA Sports PGA Tour. Why? What? Why? Um, but yeah. I, I love the fact that there is none of that sort of like, like exclusivity that we have with football games we don't have the premiership in 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 pairs but it's in fifa um that that sort of kind of thing the fact that pga tour is in both i kind of like that there's probably some some things that are exclusive to one and not the other i think there was uh that we've gone over previously obviously haven't retained that information but ea sports clearly have seen how successful pga tour has been in the hands of 2k over the last uh over the last 12, 18 months. I mean, they got on Twitch front page with, with Bibi playing for ice cream uploads. So naturally, EA want a piece of that pie. They've gone, oof, we can get Bibi stood in his living room playing. What was what was that golf thing that you were playing? Uh, oh, the um, my fee golf. Yeah, fee golf. We've got Bibi in his living room playing fee golf comp- uh, accompanied with the majestic sounds of his washing machine. We need some <laughs> of that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it is good. Competition is good. Um, I am a little bit dubious in the fact that we've had seven years since golf uh, was in the EA camp. And when it was there, it was trash. Is it just, oh, this is making, excuse me, this is making money. People are interested. We've got golf creators that are starting to boom online as well. So it's a good time to get back into golf. We can make money off this. It probably is. But yeah, there's it's not- fashionable to play now. Yeah, exactly. But there's nothing to say that, that, they can make a success out of that. I mean, it's it's easy to be cynical and say they're just doing it for the money. Yeah, the all game companies do it for the money because of course they do. That's what that's what the the businesses that's what they're fuel, uh, fueled by. They want to do a good job as well. So hopefully they do a good job uh, as they make the content, and hopefully, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it it works for everyone. Jobs are good and nice. I would yeah. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Let's jump into the chat then. Um, uh, rolling back up. Da, 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 da. That was the reason. Oh, no. What we're we talking about there. Oh no! Back to the Twitch stuff. I didn't even see these comments. Um, uh, that Twitch thing sounds very good. Says Callan Echo. Can I change my location and get it cheaper? Says Enix. I don't think you can. Apparently, the comments that I was seeing or hearing yesterday in some um, Twitch chats with larger streamers. So I'm assuming they've probably had conversations with their their uh, their representatives at Twitch. Is that it's not necessarily based on something like obviously most people not most a lot of people that watch twitch or will subscribe on twitch or play games on their pc will have access to some form of vpn so suddenly i i live in turkey that's it i live just just Mm. outside marmaris jobs are good and but it's all about your billing uh details so your billing address is what 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 that comes down to apparently but i don't know how easy that is to tweak or change or whatever these are just early conversations but it's not necessarily where your browser says you are but where your bank says you are or your payment says you are yeah. but what if you pay through x solar and stuff like that can you just change your i don't know i don't know but yeah um that was my initial thought well that's it everyone's just going to say they're in turkey and uh jobs are good and, but it's, yeah you'd have to think that's not how it would work because that wouldn't be sustainable for Twitch or streamers either. Everyone just loses revenue without the benefits. Um, you've been able to switch your re- region on the Xbox website and buy games at cheaper prices. Never done it though. Uh, see comment about risk aversion above. <laughs> not Nothing wrong with being safe. Um, that was the reason for the price hikes for low earning countries, unfortunately, and it ruined the game price economy for those territories. Ooh. Uh, it's fair because they do it from the most people uh, in land's income. Um, like he spends 20 grand a month to FIFA packs who cast it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but, but is it? Jobs are good. Um, crap, more stank. <laughs> what a name, mate. Hey, good morning. Um, I don't know what Ishpinust means, uh, but, but good morning. Uh, I don't believe people care a video game golf i mean i i can see that because i'm not going to play video game, i'm not going to play video game golf but i know just from sitting next to this guy that there is a lot of people that very very much do care for video game golf uh, i'm not one of those people but there are people out there that absolutely do. just like there's people out there that like to watch hot tub streams people people like what they like and that's what it is uh they missed a trick here the uh, the headline should have read swing 22 not Spring 22. <laughs> um, do you know how many times they rewrote that title? Four. Hey. Hey, babe. Uh, 
Uh, I want to see video game of the the babes playing beach volleyball. <laughs> I don't think the PGA would be very much on board with that. But uh, you know, you do you, you do you. Uh, it's it's an easier sell than golf. Uh, and then Gary saying, "What? Chill out, chill out, mate, chill out, mate. Yeah, chill, chill out, chill." Out. <laughs> Mar- it, wait, wait, put this right. He doesn't like golf. He thinks it's shit. But he wants to wank over like anime. But volleyball, that's priorities, I suppose. Well, but you know, each their own. I mean, it, it, it does say, uh, please understand, my language is not angry at Danka. So, so yeah, yeah. Mm. We well, assume it's one of those things that's kind of like mixed up in translation, but thank you for the input. <laughs> uh, Mario Golf is the one, says Enix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I for, agree. For most yearly iteration games, there's a strong argument for why they're unnecessary, says Tito. Golf games are on a whole other level. What legitimately is there about golf that it dictates there should be a new version every year over to you bib yeah i i agree with that to a large extent but then there's also like if i was to buy a game if I, I we've got pga right okay so for instance last year's pga came out the licenses for all the players then only last maybe 12 months maybe 18 maybe two years depending on the contract that they've signed I bought that game then. What if in three years' time it's still the same game, but all of the players that was originally in the game are no longer there? The courses aren't licensed anymore. So you've a game that's come out three years ago is nothing like the game that you're still buying now. So that's I think that's the reason why they have to bring out a new iteration because golf, golf is all about where you're going to be playing, the clubs that you're going to be playing with, the 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 attire that you're going to be using, all of that stuff is irrelevant after six months because there'll be a new version of the Wilson Staff Club. There'll be a new uh, Pro V1 type ball where it'll have a little bit more bounce and you'll have new Vokey wedges that have uh, a better degree of, to be able to come through. They'll have helium shafts on your three wood. Like There's so many variables in golf that it, unless you play golf, you're probably not aware. And that's just me saying, Tito, I have no idea how much you like golf and if you play it. But the, the variables in golf... The game, if that game didn't come out every year or every 18 months or something like that, I would be fuming if I bought a game in three years' time that was not, the, not a yearly iteration and then Justin Thomas isn't in it, Bryson DeChambeau isn't in it, uh, Ian Poulter isn't in it, and you're just left with nobody because they're probably signed with EA Sports. Like It's it's very difficult, especially when you are taking real-life likenesses of people and courses, because if you lose a license to it, what have you got left? That's my opinion. The thing is, as well, I mean, this is I could this could be a completely wrong opinion for me. This is a non-golfer's opinion on someone else, so it's outsiderism. Um, but golf is it's, it's a rich man's sport. It, it the, the new clubs cost ah. cost hundreds of pounds. Uh, you you you. Your old man pants. Uh, nobody has them, so you have to go out and buy pants that make you look stupid. Yeah, you need you need a. Uh, 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 what they call a cardigan vest top kind of thing, whatever the fuck that's called, and 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 then you need a a, a hat that says oh, it's a little bit more cooler now. <laughs> this is in the nineteen fifties. It's so much cooler. I mean, you can you can you play tell with yourself, hoodies on the let golf me, course. Let me now. finish. This is my outside of point. Just because you walk around with a hat that says tit least on it, jobs are good and it's fine. Uh, but my my point from the outside is that yeah. a lot of the people that are into golf are into the whole shebang. They want the vanity uh, items so yeah. having that up to date co- uh, course having that up to date um golf stick i know that's the technical term for it um <laughs> and, uh, uh, like having all of that stuff so that's probably it's probably more apparent and more acceptable in golf so we are, we quite often say in football games just releasing the game with an upsca- uh, upskinned, upscaled version, the season update sort of element to a football mm. game. Um, that's quite often what a lot of football games are. How can they charge for that? But that's exactly what a lot of golfers would be paying for in terms of, I've got I've got clubs and they do the job, but there's a new one, so I need to buy that one. And and, uh, and yeah, they probably yeah. do have improvements and stuff, but golf, and, and just like Formula One is, golf and Formula One are the rich man's sports. Yeah, not not that you can't get involved in racing and you can't get involved in golf without spending a fortune. You absolutely can do, but mm-hmm. but historically they are those games. So if there's any games that kind of almost are compelled to release every year, it it would be those two kind of games in terms of they're the ones that have a com- a community of committed and seasonal gamers yeah. as well so i mean i'm not i'm not a golf gamer so the fact that they release one every year or every 3 years is kind of irrelevant to me but i know as a golfer mm-hmm. 
um, buying that game that has oof, look at that it's got um, Barry De Chambers and his and his new super strong power that's what he's called isn't it Barry De Chambers not Bryce De Chambeau. Um yeah <laughs> it's it's got Barry De Chambers and his new and his new gloves and yeah. stuff like that and whatever that's that that for a lot of people is the difference in golf golf is mm-hmm. is its beauty is in its subtleties and its nuances and stuff so yeah. so that yeah if that... your biggest selling point is playing at augusta and then two years down the line because they're not bringing a new game out every year they've lost the license and you go to buy that game planning on playing at augusta and it's not there you'd be fuming wouldn't you so i think like you say having new new gear that comes out pretty much every three or four months it's always better than the last one. They market it completely differently and they'll have cooler people playing it. Yeah, I think if there's one game that needs it, it's probably a golf game because um, it's all about where you play. And I know it's virtual golf and you can pretty much just have an open field and play it, but it's all about having that photorealistic version of TPC Sawgrass or, T- or uh, Augusta or Pebble Beach or St. Andrews, all these iconic places. This That's why you buy a golf game because you want to play on these courses virtually. Well, we... I say we chat in its infinite glory has figured out how to save golf games and and make them a game for the future. The conversation between dead or alive volleyball beach babes and golf and and mentioning hot tubs and stuff has got down to Plum Rico. Uh, so between Gary uh, Krapmoshtank and Plum Rico, we have hot tub golf. It's the future. There you go. That's it. That's it. Jesus job Christ. job done. Get get ice cream uploads copyright patented on that. Jobs are good and in partnership with Twitch streamers. That's it. That's business. Uh, the Fink, good morning, says, was there ever... Uh, actually, good afternoon now, by the way. Uh, was there ever a happy Gilmore golf game? Uh, Mr. Trick, if there's not. There is. It's called Bryson DeChambeau. From what I can tell, he is happy Gilmore. He just belts the fucker. Is that not, is that, is that not what he does? <laughs> <laughs> it does. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. Not the ball. <laughs> happy Gilmore is... Uh, well, Bryson DeChambeau is Happy Gilmore incarnate. So it's it's, it's there. It's been done. Um, pretty sure it already exists in some of these uh, Paradise Island and other real life TV series. What, the um, the Hot Tub Golf? <laughs> okay, well, okay, maybe maybe it's been done. We'll leave it to them then. Fine. Anyway, one final article before we drop off for the day. Um, Pokemon, gotta catch them all. If anyone's still playing Pokemon Go, this article by Josh Coulson at The Gamer is for you. as is a Pokemon Go buddies are fainting if you walk with them for too long. Pokemon, Pokemon Go players are reporting their buddies fa- uh, falling flat on their face if they walk for too long, which is interesting because the whole point of the game is for you supposed to walk with your Pokemon buddies. Anyway, a strange glitch in Pokemon Go is causing buddy Pokemon to faint if you have them walk alongside you for too long. I know that feeling. Uh, the introduction of buddy yeah. Pokemon to Pokemon Go has been one of the more useful features added to the game since launch. Trainers can select one of their Pokemon to leave the confines of their Pokeball and walk alongside them just like Ash's Pikachu. Not only is it aesthetically pleasing, but your buddy will also find candies depending on how far they walk. However, a new bug is making trainers Pokemon fain if they walked for too long. Don't panic. This isn't a tweak to the feature Niantic has added to make you switch out your buddy more frequently. At least it doesn't appear to be. It's merely a glitch that results in your buddy falling flat on its face after walking for a while. Reddit user uh, AbbeyJosh2008 posted a photo of their Azumarill face down and seemingly unresponsive. Look at it dead. <laughs> that that Azumarill just given up on life. Fuck the shit I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something that would usually be reserved for a Pokemon that has been defeated in battle. Fear not, the Azumarill was quickly revived. It did require the game to be closed and booted back up, though. A pain, but a minor price to pay to see a Pokemon back on its feet. There's always a lot going on in Pokemon Go, but now is a, is, is a worse time than ever for your buddy to be fainting unannounced. We're not too bothered about the in-game events, but that's just a heads up. If you are playing Pokemon Go and your buddy does look absolutely shattered, just give the game a restart. Jobs are good and nice. Asmeral dead. PGA ultimate confirmed. Nice. Um, Happy Gilmore 2 is being made, apparently. I did see that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We we got coming to America, um, or whatever it was called. This, this, was it just called coming to yeah, America? Um, it, it was okay. Uh, but but it wasn't anything better than, okay, said in a higher-pitched tone of voice. It's not the worst film you've ever seen, but it's definitely not coming to America, the original. So... After this amount of time, Happy Gilmore was good because of what it was and when it was made and in the time. I kind of feel like I've got, I've got. It's going to be forced, surely, right? Some of the humour, Adam Sandler just screaming, but but now as a fifty-year-old bloke rather than some twenty-something that's trying to look after his mum, kind of thing. I'm not sure it will be the same. 
Um, Tito, respectfully, I disagree, Bibi. It either has the course or not. Whether it's an existing game or new, it still needs to be licensed. I see it being a base game and a yearly relicensing season pass. You can add new golfers slash equipment as add-ons. Uh <laughs> Yeah, do you know I, I can I can see that I could I could see I, I could see any sports game really. Um, I, d- I wouldn't necessarily say that golf is any harder to to justify being an annual update than any other sports game that works on an annual cycle in that sort of sense. In theory, you buy the license for the game and then DLC and seasonal updates could work on every single game. Perhaps they should be. All, I mean, we've been saying for for ten to fifteen years, Pezzes and Fifas. Why do we Why do we need um, a game that comes out every year, and then a World Cup or a Euro specific game that comes out as well on top of that? Why do we need this stuff when it could all be in it? Um, when slight physics adjustments, slight licensing adjustments and stuff could all change. <laughs> there is all sorts of differences, obviously, with yeah. with golf in terms of should you you pay for a DLC that gives you Augusta and then that doesn't get relicensed because say EA take it and 2K can't get it. What happens to that then? Can you not use that in the game anymore? And if you can't, if you can use that game in the more, can you not say, let's say Augusta was licensed three years ago and I've had in my DLC and I've been able to play it every year because the license is fine. Let's say Bryson DeChambeau comes in in this year's game, but has never been in before. But Augusta's no longer licensed. Do I get to play with the players that were in three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, mm-hmm. but not Bryson and the show? So there's all sorts of licensing is that's it, my biggest issue. Yeah. I mean that that's the licensing is the is the ball ache in all of that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. I, I reckon without licensing regulations and, and like <clears throat> the intricacies around that, I think we'd have had video games, sports games moving towards seasonal stuff a long, long time ago. I do think I do think it will happen eventually, but I think that the thing that keeps it years away from now is licenses. So we've was there was there a story the other day about Serie A being licensed by EA or something? I think I saw a headline. I didn't actually yeah. see the article. But that could mean okay, well, that's three years until we start to see that sort of stuff. If they've signed it for three years, then that could be three years of licensing stuff that's put in place, unless they've planned ahead. Say say they've bought that license now with the idea of including some subtext that allows them to change to a annual sort of title. And if, but yeah, anyway, long story. Uh, licensing, bad. well, not bad, good, but complex. But if I if like if I had if if the new PGA game came out this year, the biggest part it was just a base game, and the biggest part was that you could play Pebble Beach, and then next year the license goes, I can't play Pebble Beach now, but I can put a copy of my Tiger Woods Masters twelve in and still be able to play Pebble Beach. Like it's a, I, I always I always just assume it's a product of that time. You have twelve months with that product to enjoy everything that the game is meant to be. If it was a base game, and it's like you buy World of Warcraft base game. You buy the expansion. You don't lose what you had previously. That's where the base game stuff falls down. You would always want to have what it came out with because that's what you bought it for. If stuff started getting taken away from you, I would be fucking livid and it would be pointless. Yeah. I mean, that's where you kind of get the difficulties of do you have to drop the prices then? Oh, you can. This thing that we charge you 20 quid for, we're only charging you eight quid for now because you only get it for 12 months and it disappears. You're basically renting a course <laughs> for 12 months. Yeah. Uh, so, it, it, yeah. It'd be great. Would I like to see sports games as annual releases? Yes. It's just, it's just, sports games are, I mean, cake is just look at Destiny 2 to see this in practice. I mean, that's the thing though. Destiny 2 is fantasy entirely fantasy that isn't licensing external products whereas these games are licensing external products and you can never buy the a license open-ended and well you can Mm -hmm. but it will cost you an absolute fortune um and if you are buying it open-ended there will be all sorts of issues with it like down to the fact that let's say uh pez 5 who loves pez 5 me who had it as their favorite game me who's been involved in doing social media content for pez me not all the time, yeah. but some of it. But who can't tweet about the Pez 5 game case on Pez social channels? Me! Uh, because John Terry isn't a footballer anymore. He's not licensed. Thierry Henry's not a footballer. He's not licensed, or he has been as a legend through the Barca bits and stuff. The kits that they're wearing, even though Arsenal are in the game, that kit 
um, by those man- that, that manufacturer, that like that that burgundy um, uh, kit that Arsenal wore for their centenary kind of thing. That kit isn't in the game. That's not a licensed product. So that kit, that case, which was owned and made by Konami, cannot be shared because it includes licenses and stuff that have lapsed. So they can't even share images of their own product without potentially getting in hot water. That's how difficult licensing can be. Yeah. Uh, and not yet. So yeah. Tony Hawks. They had Tony Hawks HD, and you can't play that game now because the same way he got hold digitally. So it licenses are a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know on that bombshell we will put a pin in things. Thank you everyone for coming back. Uh, for everyone that's come for the first time, we appreciate you being here. Let's jump back to the comments. Um, coming to America was terrible. Turned it off, says Plum Rico. Do you think it was that bad? See, I don't, I'm not. I don't think it was good at all. I think it was okay, and I, I probably think it was okay because I've seen the first one so many times, like unbelievably that many times, that I was probably going to tolerate it anyway but i don't think I'd, i wouldn't even say i tolerated it i thought it was okay did i think it was great no did i think it was good no did i think it, i've seen worse yeah so i wouldn't have thought it was terrible but then again i under, uh, yeah but then again it didn't really do anything if you expected more i understand so that makes sense uh stop moving chat how dare you keep talking uh but if you bought the new <laughs> game you wouldn't have augusta either in that instance is my point it doesn't change the outcome yeah, but if you Somebody already had... wouldn't have been taken away from me. Yeah, that's the point. If you already had Augusta and then you bought the new game, you, does that mean that you... Like, if you bought the new game, you wouldn't have it, but if you already had Augusta in the in annual iteration, it, then, what, you can't play with it? You can't use that? So that's that's where the, uh, the difficulties come in. Um, yeah, coming to America was not good, just full of, hey, people, do you remember this joke from the first one? Oh, there was a lot of that. Yeah, definitely. Um... Yes, it has complexities. We've already seen that in pairs with Inter and AC, wasn't it? Yep, 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 for sure. Um, crap much that. Coming to America is when you get old lady and hit with Bell asking to make more cookies. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, just look at Destiny 2 to see this in practice. But uh, but they removed content that new players cannot access uh, that was there at the beginning of Destiny 2 release. Oh, I thought you meant in terms of like keeping content coming. Ah, I didn't I didn't I didn't understand that bit. But um, but yeah, though that is that is daft. Uh, getting rid of content i mean if people paid for that content as well i mean if it was a free-to-play game and there was content in it that's then removed then it's kind of like a par for the course but if it's a game that you've invested particularly financially in in any way shape or form to get that content then that is bizarre and that's and that's where the difficulties come from uh degnan says i've came here to simply say blue raspberry mousse juice tastes like sherbet Good morning. Good <laughs> afternoon. Uh, yeah, he, he found some uh, moose juice the other day and told me that he was going to buy some, so I gave him my rundown of my order of the four. Apple in tier one. Tier two is a joint between tropical and the, is it berry one? And then tier three is my blue raspberry, so I would put that one last. But it, Not that it's bad, but that's the order of preference that I would go. Um, Plum Rico says, thanks for that, Degden. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it's terrible. I couldn't finish it. What, coming to America? I mean, it must just be me then. Maybe I've just got a low threshold for pain. <laughs> I'm a sucker for punishment. Uh, just to be an asshole, but with any game, you don't own it. You you own a license to play it. It can be revoked at any point. I know what you're saying, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, if it's a live service game. Uh, well, well can, with anything, really. Um, if, if you buy a, any digital game, you, you never buy the game. You just buy a license to be able mm. to use it, um, which is which is where the ridiculousness comes of. That's like a, uh, a software law kind of thing that was defined mm-hmm. for software reasons, for business reasons, not necessarily for... So anyway, the, the evolution of, of ownership of digital IP, that's where that's kind of come from. Is it the right way it should be done? No. Has anyone got a better one than place? No. So we'll just go with what it is. Anyway, ninety pounds of content I can no longer play. Love it. Uh, part for the course. I thought you didn't play golf. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's just one of those phrases. There you go. Uh, I fully expected C to A to be even more bad, so I was okay with it. And then, uh, and also seen the first one uh, a bajillion times. Um, yeah, I kind of, I ex- uh, yeah, I suppose maybe I expected it to be a bit naff um so just kind of went in with what it was um even a game on a disc if you read the insert the uh, eula states that you do not own the game facts facts you own the disc you own the physical uh components that are there but it doesn't necessarily grant you a permanent forever access to the digital contents on it 
that there you go. But anyway, thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of The Scoop. Has this been a meatier one? It has been a good good yes. an hour and 20 minutes-ish. So thank you all for sticking around. We appreciate you being here. We are going to disappear. Just a reminder that we do not have gameplay on Tuesday, so we will not be back with an additional stream after this one. What we are going to do, though, is find a friend of a channel to raid. So we will drop a raid on that channel. If you are sticking around for the raid, you will get yourself a few extra channel points, which are down in the corner down there. Channel points are available on any affiliate slash Twitch partners channels, if they've opted into them. Um, and it means it just basically you can interact with that channel. So you can make me sit up straight, you can make me change the lights to the room, or if you stick around for long enough, you can buy yourself a free subscription to the channel using your channel points. So stick around for the raid to get yourself a few more points and help a friend. But before all of that happens, Bibe, is there anything you would like to add? Yes. Yes, again, thank you very much for joining us for these juicy debates that we have had today. We very much appreciate it. But if you want to do, if you want to help shape our show, there's two ways that you can do that. First of all, find us on social media at Ice Cream Waters across all major social media profiles or get us in our Discord. The links are in the description if you are watching this on video on demand or if you listen to this on demand via any of our podcast services, just go to the description below. You'll be able to see all of those. Um, but all we need from you is a URL plus your false impressions. We will then give you our false impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow, Mr. Graham Day? Uh, well, that will be at 10 a.m. Ish. So we've got like about 10 a.m. ish. It could, it, could, it could vary. It varies usually, but 10 a.m. ish. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to drop a raid on Big Hamish, who's raided us a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. So if we can all just just go say hello to Hamish, you don't have to stick around. But if you want to see him play some some nice uh, PUBG console games, then feel free to stick around with him through your lunch. Also, think about dropping a follow because he's a good guy and he does help us out. And he's and he supported us with the insert coin stream last week and everything. So go give Hamish some love. Have yourselves a fantastic day, though, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you 10 a.m. tomorrow ish for. The next episode of the scoop until then what they got to do bib stay frosty stay frosty